to shut down the government over the wall, and yes, we will not get paid. This is fake news. And yes, we need to get Rick, Rick, you're not being fair to the article. No, 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 hold on, Rick. Don't 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 say that BS on this show. Yeah, Yeah, the the president has put forward a detailed plan, has offered to compromise a lot of people. You're talking about a variety of different things. To see what Northern's constituents think about this ongoing scandal. Let's take a look. When you look at this photograph on Governor Northam's yearbook page, what goes through your mind? Makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> more than anything. Not okay. And it just shows that this is the character of a man, point blank. I don't care about the car, I don't care about his nice picture, just this is who he was. Well, the only thing I see that he's done wrong is not admitting it's him, it's his, web, it's his page and his yearbook. But other than that, it's 35 years ago. He was a young man. He did stupid stuff like a lot of us do. Do you feel that him going back and forth, oh, saying just, first <laughs> it was him, then, then it oh, wasn't, wasn't him? Me. No, look, it was him. Like, he wouldn't, I don't care if he, oh, I haven't seen his yearbook, it, that was him. I think it bothers me that he's not being honest. I think if he owns up to it, maybe more people would be a little more graceful towards it and understanding for both sides of the parties. And what do you think should happen next? He should suck it up and resign. Whether he should resign, that's up to him entirely. So I'm not going to tell him what to do. I hope he's yeah. a better person now that understands this is not okay. Um, but the fact that he did it at all is, is just makes me not feel a bit about him. How can you do that? How can you spit in the faces of people that, that trust you? So it is disturbing. And very, it's very disturbing. And, you, and you'd like to see him resign? I'm yes, I would. And I voted for him. Well, as of today, many Democrats have called on Northam to resign, but he was once endorsed by all of his party's key political players, including, let's see, Senators Mark Warner, Tim Kaine, Clinton hacked Terry McAuliffe, the former governor, and even President Obama, who claimed that Northam would put an end to divisive politics. Now, instead, Northam ran on a race-baiting platform. His motto was, we're welcoming and inclusive. Donald Trump is divisive and dangerous. Okay. Northam is far from the only Democrat, by the way, to run this type of campaign, which brings us to tonight's Hannity history lesson. That is the Democratic Party's racist past, including not that long ago. Many Republicans were proud to be, well, I'm actually conservative, but the party of Lincoln, the Emancipation Proclamation, the 1960s Civil Rights Movement, and Democrats, well, they don't want you to know anything about their past. For example, 112 Democratic lawmakers voted against the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which outlawed racism against minorities, which, by the way, Lyndon Johnson needed the Republican Party. Al Gore's father, prominent Democrat, well, as a senator, he voted against the Civil Rights Act. One year later, 70 Democrats voted against the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which prevented racism at the ballot box. And the Democratic Party also largely opposed racial integration in schools. In 1959, 99 Democratic lawmakers signed off what was known as the Southern Manifesto, which was drafted to counter the historic Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court decision. And as governor, oh, Democrat George Wallace, he stood in the doorway of a Birmingham school to physically block racial integration. Former President Bill Clinton, yes, called J. William Fulbright so many times his, his great mentor. Fulbright vigorously opposed all integration efforts, and Clinton's beloved mentor was a segregationist. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton said that Senator uh, Robert KKK Byrd was, was her mentor. Byrd was a lifelong Democrat before serving in Congress. Yeah, Byrd was actually in the Ku Klux Klan. In the Senate, Byrd actually filibustered the 64 Civil Rights Act for 14 hours. Later apologized for his racist past, KKK ties, but in 2001, Hillary Clinton's mentor sparked even more controversy over these racist comments. This was during an interview with our friend Tony Snow. Take a look. There are white <laughs> I've seen a lot of white <laughs> in my time. I'm going to use that word. But we've all, we all, we just need to work together to make our country a better country. And the Hannity history lesson continues. Well, meanwhile, we have another prominent Democrat. Oh, crazy Uncle Joe, former Vice President Joe Biden, also facing charges of racism. According to the Washington Times, 1975 opposed the policy called desegregation, busing, which helped integrate public schools. 
Of course, this shouldn't surprise anyone. Kind of crazy Uncle Joe has a long history. Make it really dumb. Well, I'll let you decide what kind of remarks. Take a look. In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. The point, am I, I'm not joking. What, what kind of a chance would a northeastern liberal like Joe Biden stand uh, in the South? Better than anybody else. Now, you don't know my state. My state was a slave state. My state is a border state. My state is the eighth largest black population in the country. We got the first sort of mainstream African American yes. who is articulate and bright and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, this, that's a story for Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. First, African American, articulate, bright, and clean. And of course, my state's a slave state. Then, of course, you can't go to a 7 Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. Imagine any Trump supporter said this. Now, deflection is the name of the game, of course, and lying and distortion of the Democratic Party and the hard left in this country. I tell you, every two and four years, the party actively avoids their racist past and claims that Republicans, racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, dirty air, water, kill children and granny. I guess it shouldn't surprise anyone that the party of Robert Byrd, George Wallace, Al Gore Sr. now is using this race issue as a political ploy yet again. Take a look. Many Republicans talk in coded racial language about takers and losers. They demonize President Obama and encourage the ugliest impulses of the paranoid fringe. If you accept the support of Klan sympathizers before you are president, you will accept their support after you're president. It's wrong what the leader of the Republican Party and this Congress are doing in blocking an accurate census because they don't want to count everyone that they don't think they can count on. They are in favor of affirmative action if you can dunk the basketball or sink a three-point shot. But they're not in favor of it if you merely have the potential to be a leader in your community and bring people together. Don't tell me we've got a colorblind society. June 7th, 1998, in Texas, my father was killed. He was beaten, chained, and then dragged three miles to his death, all because he was black. So when Governor George W. Bush refused to support hate crimes legislation, it was like my father was killed all over again. When you don't vote, you let another church explode. When you don't vote, you allow another cross to burn. Now, sadly, in addition to race, Democrats are also actively exploiting the Me Too movement for political gain. We saw a prime example recently during the Kavanaugh confirmation process. Democrats using uncorroborated, unsubstantiated claims of past sexual misconduct going back to high school, remember, including untrue, wild accusations of nearly weekly gang rapes and drugging young girls. Why to oppose Kavanaugh's confirmation? They said... All women are to be believed. No one gets due process. No one gets the presumption of innocence. Guilty as charged. Remember this. Not only do women like Dr. Ford, who bravely comes forward, need to be heard, but they need to be believed. They need to be believed. I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. Do the right thing. Let me just say right at the outset, I believe... Dr. Ford, I believe the survivor here. I believe her, I stand with her, and I don't think she should be bullied into this scenario. I believe her. I believe Professor Ford. I think she's credible. Uh-oh, Democrats now have a very serious Me Too problem themselves. I want to see how many of those very same Democrats will now say, I believe. Why? The Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, Justin Fairfax, who many Democrats want to replace Northam if he resigns, well, he's facing tonight a serious charge of serious sexual misconduct. Earlier today, he finally responded, called the encounter consensual. Now, we're going to be consistent. We're not going to rush to judgment. We never do. Due process, presumption of innocence. 
even Avenatti. Remember those charges? We waited. The very thing he didn't give Judge Kavanaugh. Turns out he was cleared of those allegations. That's not the standard, though, of the Democratic Party. I believe without any real evidence, any even hearing from somebody. Aren't all claims supposed to now be believed first? Isn't this now a disqualifier for office for the lieutenant governor? Are Democrats now going to call for the lieutenant governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia to resign? Now, I'm not holding my breath. You're now going to watch a looming double standard, pure hypocrisy play out in real time. By the way, where's Kamala Harris tonight? Where's Gillibrand, Blumenthal, Feinstein? Their silence is deafening. Pure, utter hypocrisy. The same people that bludgeoned Justice Kavanaugh, smeared, slandered, besmirched him, just like many did Clarence Thomas and Robert Bork. Sarah Carter also asked Virginians about this looming scandal and the Democrats' double standard. Let's take a look. The business with Fairfax, I... I haven't seen anything to substantiate the initial claim, so I need more evidence. I have such like a strong opinion on like sexual assault and stuff like that, and so I think it's really upsetting, but I don't think that he'll get like as much attention about it as like uh, Kavanaugh did. And why do you think that is? Because he's a Democrat. I think.